This review is made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Be sure to share and donate to our Rewrite the Stars 5th Anniversary campaign at GoFundMe.com, link found in the information below. Hey guys, it's once again time to kick off Christmas in July. And today we have a very special present coming all the way from China. I give you Little Gobi and the Big Christmas Adventure. Or just Little Gobi, apparently. We open with a little narration that immediately lets us know what kind of a movie we're in for. Once upon a time, in a land full of hoverboards and pet dragons. Never in my entire life have I been so confused and horrified by a movie's opening narration. Yes, once upon a time in a land full of hoverboards and pet dragons lived a slightly more polished Alpha and Omega pup with reindeer antlers named Gobi. He loves being a dick to his pet dragons, Kuma and Bebe, as is demonstrated by how he takes Bebe hoverboarding with him despite his very obvious objections. No means no, you little dickweed. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I know how hoverboards work, but I'm pretty sure this warrants a... Uh... Physics! 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 At first glance, it looks like someone tried to combine Crash Bandicoot with Spyro the Dragon, but the hoverboard, the vest that looks like a life jacket... Are they trying to rip off Back to the Future as well? Wow! A real life astro-pick! A real life what? A real life astro-pick! A real life astro-pick? A real life astral pit? A real life astral pit! A real life ass to lick? A real life astral pit! Whatever, let's move on. He continues on his merry way through some kind of ice park that's closed for renovation, despite the gate being left open for anyone to wander through, when this happens. <laughs> So that was Little Gobi. It's hardly a perfect film, but hey, at least it was short. Ow! My head! Oh, wait, we're still going. Wow, Damn it. And what happened? Did the avalanche politely decide to not be on top of Gobi anymore? Sadly, it was Bebe instead of Gobi who was badly hurt, so they stick him in a dragon hospital in the Star Wars galaxy far, far away. The doctors can only do so much for him, but Grandpa Christopher Walken tells Gobi that if he can get to Santa Claus before Christmas Day, he can wish for Bebe to get better. I must hurry up and go now! Gobi! Take this with you. Oh yeah, don't try to stop him because it's too dangerous, or offer to go with him so you can protect him. Just let him go with nothing but a Christmas tree bulb. Thanks, Gramps. Gobi! Santa Land is at the northernmost point, so just keep heading north. And if the position of the sun is any indication, he got hopelessly lost because he was walking east instead of north. Gobi and Kuma had to hurry because they only had a few days to get to Santa Land so his wish could be granted. 
And then one night, they met an old man who was just as mischievous and who loved excitement just as much as Gobi himself. Until we can whip up some visuals to convey that, enjoy these giant mushrooms because I guess we're in Wonderland now. We finally do see the old man the narrator mentioned, who is also a reindeer like Gobi, except he has snake eyes and a severe underbite that makes him look like Beavis. He's a reindeer. So he's literally a horny old man? Certainly seems that way. Mm. Hey there, little Gobi. You like mushrooms? We've walked so far. I'm so tired. Dude, you don't even need to move all that much and you look worse than me. He's flying, you little asshole! He's moving more than you! He goes into the mushroom patch after reading a sign advertising all the free mushrooms you can eat, which is covering another sign putting a very clear kibosh on eating these mushrooms. How the hell did that first sign get there? He then meets old Nick here, and they're soon chased down by identical clones of a bulldog mushroom farmer, driving that digger from Beetlejuice. And because they're bulldogs, that means that they have to have horns. Okay. Isn't this fun? They really are such bullies. Why did you have to say that like you're searching for the Titanic? There is something definitely wrong here, and we're in trouble. Trust me, it's really big. They soon crash into a castle that just pops out of nowhere, and for some reason, Gobi doesn't think to just use his hoverboard to hover to safety. <laughs> Did... did the dragon just catch them? I think the dragon caught them. The car, Old Nick, and Gobi? The car, Old Nick, and Gobi. How is that even the slightest bit possible? I don't know. Christmas magic? Oh, right. The Christmas icicle. And then... there are eggs with... spindly legs? And an old turtle lady who's trying to gather eggshells while constantly calling the eggs eggheads. Hey, you over there! Move, eggheads! Be careful, eggheads! This is a sanitized area, eggheads! Go, eggheads! Be careful, eggheads! Tell that'll happen, eggheads! Be quiet about it, eggheads! The eggers are such eggheads! What is going on tonight? What the hell makes you think we know? No, seriously, what in God's holy name is even happening right now? One minute we're in a mushroom kingdom, the next we're in a castle that's some kind of factory being run by an army of eggs, the leader of whom is Old Mother Hubbard, who is actually a Koopa? Is this based off of a rejected treatment for a Super Mario movie? Raven and I have written Mad Lib Theater scripts that made more sense than this. What is this place? Unless I'm mistaken, I think this is an Easter egg factory. In the Arctic Circle? If you want to produce eggs on a large scale, don't you want to do it where it's just a little bit warmer? Yeah, for some reason we have an Easter egg factory located in a really bad place to produce eggs, and instead of painting the eggs, these little eggers are supposed to break the eggs with their faces and then do God knows what with the broken eggshells. What's next? A jack-o'-lantern factory where they take pumpkins and toss them into a blender? Wow, look at that! They're hatching astrofish eggs! Yeah, even a blind man can see that. Ah, he was saying astrofish earlier. Why was he saying astrofish earlier? It's not like they're space krakens from the movie Spark. They're just really big fish. What's so astro about them? Is it because they have a tripodal cuddle fin and four blowholes? Why are the eggers hatching these eggs themselves instead of letting them hatch naturally? What do they get from hatching baby astrofish? Why do these filmmakers think that fish come in ostrich eggs? Something jams the assembly line, which means that they can't continue doing whatever the flying f it is that they're doing. Ah, it can't be fixed. Ugh, what am I going to do? Hire workers that have arms and faces, maybe? She recruits Gobi and Nick to help hatch the eggs so she'll make her nightly quota, whatever the hell that means, which will be rewarded with her telling them how to get to Santa Land. 
Of course, they already know how to get to Sentinel just by going north, so this stupid little diversion does absolutely nothing to move the plot forward. Why are you idiots doing this when you already know how to get to Santa Land? Hours later, they finally finish hatching the eggs. Wow, I got lucky tonight. We jump cut to Gobi and Nick floating down the river because I guess this is the quickest way to Santa Land. This is almost like being at an amusement park. We're quite far from Dozo's house already. Wait, Gozer? The turtle lady's name was Gozer? Like from Ghostbusters? Are you a turtle? No. Then die! They eventually reach what I can only assume is Santa Land. Come on, look how festive and Christmassy that place is. It has to be Santa Land. Then they run into one of the astrofish they hatched earlier. Who has to wear goggles because... I don't know. Again with the Mario imagery. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Ew, I hope he spit that. Kuma. No, Kuma. Does Gobi just keep dozens of rubber duckies on him at all times? And Kuma just pulled that frying pan right out of Gobi's ass. And in case you're wondering, no, Kuma never shuts up. Whenever our protagonists aren't exchanging pointless banter, all we ever hear is this little thing saying, Kua! Kua! Never in my life have I wanted a small animal so very, very dead. Things quickly take a turn for the hopeful as they get attacked by a great big Kuma fish! Thank God you're safe! So far, we've seen Mushroom Farmer clones, a Koopa Lady making Easter eggs, and now we have the whale from Pinocchio. What the flying f does this have anything to do with Christmas?! Sadly, as has been well established... There's always a bigger fish. And our heroes are saved by those stupid astrofish. Ugh. This is the entrance to Seattle Land! Why does Santa need a door that size? Is King Kong on the other end? Inside this tower of not Babel, they find a giant hourglass, which instantly shrinks as they get closer to it, and a bunch of boxes are surrounding them. Are the Borg attacking? And listen to the soundtrack take a Dukazian turn. <laughs> to be jumped by a deadly gang of brooms? The hourglass says that they need to get some key in Sweetie City, which will take them to the Flying Fan, which will in turn take them to Santa Land. I'm sorry, but what was the point of establishing that all this kid needs to do to get to Santa Land is to go north if that was never the case? Or if it was the case, then what is the purpose of all of this? None of this makes any sense! further before we get there. Why aren't you using your hoverboard to get to the top? They finally reach the exit, which takes them to Sweetie City. Ew, it looks like Markatropolis from Food Fight. Seriously, what the hell is going on here? At the top of this tower is a city full of sentient donuts, except they look more like chocolate-covered Cheerios. And you want to tell me that there's a Sweetie City? Fine. For the sake of argument, I'll buy it. Why aren't we seeing any Christmas sweeties? Candy canes, sugar cookies, gingerbread men? This isn't hard, people! We're halfway through the movie, and so far the only thing having anything to do with Christmas is the soundtrack! So yeah, now they need to go get this key, which is being brandished by... Some kind of rejected Kingdom Hearts character? I don't know, you tell me what the hell this thing's supposed to be! And while you're at it, explain to me why the only thing these donuts can say is DONUT! Are they the newest Pokémon or something? Now you can click them all! Fairy Cat, Donkey Tron, Penguin, Donut, Laptor! What's going on? Earthquake! 
No! Look out! It's the running of the bullshit! Hey! My bag's open! Oh no! It's Grandpa's Great Bubble! Hey! It's mine! Thank you. Thank you, little donut. Don't steal again or I'll call the police. And would you believe that's the line that inspires this Donut character, named Donut, how very clever, to join this happy little band for the rest of the movie? Not exactly. Why don't you come with us to see the wizard yourself, is it? Naomi, uh, I'm so tired. I don't think I can go on any further. Uh, just let me sit down and take a rest. Uh, uh, I guess I won't be able to see my grandson again. Grandson? Nick, what do you mean? Uh, Gobi, I don't... I was put under a curse. And if I don't find Santa Claus before midnight Christmas Eve, I'll disappear. I guess I'll never see him again. Oh. Of course! You could have had old Nick trying to get to Santa so he can wish for his cancer-stricken grandson to suddenly get better, giving Gobi a nice little parallel to his story, but nah, screw that. Just make him curse from out of nowhere. Why not? And what the f*** was he doing not looking for Santa and gathering mushrooms? And now the movie decides to focus on these donuts buying tubes of M&M's minis which they shove inside them and then explode. Damn it, movie! <laughs> Gobi continues chasing whatever the hell this thing is supposed to be. And no, I'm not calling it Little Angel despite the movie's insistence that I do. When he causes an avalanche of giant gumballs. Oh no, did something happen to Gobi? Boy, do I care right now. Whoa, that was pretty dangerous. Are you alright? Sure, I was trying to hit you with my hoverboard earlier, but are you alright? The Cabbage Patch fetus gives Gobi the key because reasons. Then he takes it to... somewhere? And he has to wait for Nick, who is in a more weakened state because... Oh yeah, I'm cursed, that was totally a thing before now. I have to wait for old Nick! He's here! Finally! Our quick and pointless plot cul-de-sac is over! They get sucked into... whatever this is, and they fly into a bunch of invisible walls while target balloons fly around them. Then they have to climb a bunch of levitating stairs to get to a lighthouse that's kinda sorta labeled as the exit. One. Again, I ask, what the hell were these animators smoking to come up with this? Two. What is the point of entering this building if the point of entering this building was just to look for the exit? We better test this out. Let's see. I don't think it's a good idea to climb the stairs at this height. Can you climb them at a lower height? But oh no, they both fall to their doom. Isn't that the flying fan? Wait a minute! Wait a motherfucking minute! They went through all of this bullshit, racing the clock, trying to get that stupid key, making their way through hordes of sentient donuts, getting pummeled by giant gumballs, getting thrown around like rag dolls, falling to their deaths, and time runs out! Just so they could end up exactly where they were trying to go in the first place?! Are you telling me that they were going to succeed anyway, even if they did absolutely nothing?! I'm sorry, baby, but I forget. What's the dragon's name again? Kuma. Thank you. I completely agree with Kuma. Congratulations! You did it! Little angel. But we fell. Yes, and you proved the unity and loyalty of your team. What?! THAT'S WHAT GOT THEM HERE?! Well then why didn't they just instantly teleport here as soon as Gobi said that he had to wait for Nick to arrive back when they were at the gate?! Fuck you, movie! And despite being in Santa Land, they need to take a blimp to get to Santa, who I guess doesn't live in Santa Land! Off we go! <laughs> Kuma, Dona! The flying vampire! works! Of course it works, because... He is risen. 
But because neither Nick nor Gobi know how to navigate and the flying fan doesn't have an autopilot or something, they immediately get lost. Don't worry though. Remember that Christmas tree bulb that Grandpa Walken gave to Gobi? Souvenir from Santa Land. Oh, then it's illuminating the way to its origins. Santa Land! Let's assume that someone else was looking for Santa Claus. They make it all the way to the flying fan, but it just so happens that they don't have a magical Christmas tree bulb that leads the way to Santa because magic shut up. They go through all of this trouble and then what? They reach the flying fan and they just don't see Santa? Why is trying to reach Santa Claus harder than searching for the Holy Grail? For the rest of the way, the Flying Fang can take us to the destination by itself. Now we can get some rest before arriving at Santa Land. I think we can arrive at Santa Land before midnight. Bitch, you're following a Christmas ornament. How the hell can you make that kind of estimation? After Donut pulls a magic mushroom out of his donut hole, which I imagine the writers were doing, we cut to later that night after Nick and Gobi fall asleep. And now the soundtrack is trying to be Edward Scissorhands. Bless the soundtrack's heart, it can't save this pile of sh**. It looks as though they finally reached Santa Land, meaning they weren't in Santa Land for the last 27 minutes. What the fuck is this movie even doing? And now they're being attacked by the rhino from James and the Giant Peach. Hold on to something so you don't fall! Hold on to some of this vintage steampunk dial technology! Or maybe whatever the hell that thing is. An apple too? A microwave? An easy bake oven? Then they fall into a giant Christmas present filled with giant asses with faces painted on them? I don't know, you tell me what they're supposed to be! Is this Santaland? This place is huge! Even if it isn't, we follow the presents and we'll get to Santa. What do you mean? Well, Santa has to give all the presents out, right? Right. I'm sorry, do you not notice the giant ass elephants everywhere? For that matter, what are they even doing here? They're surrounded by Christmas presents, some of them covered in shit smears, but the ass elephants are sniffing through giant vats of valentine cards? And are these giant flies carrying the presents around? My god, I can see the spell in this room! I don't want to be here! So many present generating elephants, too! Hang on! The ass elephants are sucking up letters, which I guess aren't Valentine's cards, but are letters to Santa with requests from the children all over the world or something, I don't know. And then they just expel the presents from their bodies? The presents are elephant shit? And. None of this phases anybody! Everyone just knows that this is where Santa's presents come from?! What the fuck is wrong with you, movie?! Let's just stop to really think about this for a minute. For generations, we've been told that Santa is able to deliver millions of presents every Christmas thanks to the aid of magical Christmas elves. It's a fact! We all know this! Imagine the mind-mangling insanity that you'd experience if you found Santa's base of operations and discovered that this is how he really did it! Just... What the hell were these people thinking?! Can you imagine how confused the kids watching this movie are right now?! Actually, no. What kids would still be watching this movie after the first 15 minutes before switching it over to find something more sane to enjoy?! Who else aside from masochistic movie reviewers are still subjugating themselves to this madness?! Masochistic movie reviewers' girlfriends? I don't say this enough, but my god, you're a trooper! 
Oh, yeah, great. It's not enough that I can see the smells in this room. I gotta hear them now, too. Thank you, movie! Then they run into the postmaster or something, who is a dragon? So in this world, dragons can be pets and people? How many times in the span of 20 seconds can this movie make me ask, WHAT THE HELL'S GOING ON?! Birth rates are going down all over the world. That can only mean one thing. Children are getting greedier and greedier. Uh, uh, of course! As birth rates are going down, of course kids are getting greedier. In other news, scientists have discovered that 80% of wildfires are caused by girly giggles. Gift City sends out presents of the highest quality to children all over the world. Thanks to this armed and fully operational present station. Seriously, why are they making this sound like the Galactic Empire? Filmmakers of Little Gobi, you will pay the price for your lack of vision. <laughs> they figure the best way to get past the Postmaster is by donning disguises, which they get from the pile of reject presents where this movie belongs. Come on, don't be silly! Don't be silly? You are in the wrong movie, you little asshole. So now they're disguised as... Gobi, Nick, Kuma, and Donut wearing strange accessories. They're found out immediately, and a little chase ensues. <gasps> oh, what? Donut and the dragon are going through your rejects, but you'd rather chase us? Yes? Because you're still intruding while someone digging through their pile of reject presents poses no threat to their operation? Yes, we know that the letters get sucked up by the ass elephants. You don't need to remind us. Please don't ever remind us again! What are we gonna do, Nick? Apparently they're gonna do less than the f***ing donut! No, seriously, after all of this stupid stupidity of stupidness, the donut saves the day by writing a letter about how he wants a very particular present, and then the ass elephants immediately shit it out! I should point out right here that Donut was the character's lame American name, while in the original Chinese he was called Dono Robo. Wow, your name is Dono Robo? That is so not lame. In all seriousness, though, just. why? Why is the climactic battle between good and evil being waged between a tubby bureaucrat and a donut? It's adorable that you're asking these questions. So the giant lizard thing is defeated because Dono Robo shoots chocolate at him. Someone had to write that. And our heroes can finally resume their journey. Dono Robo, you can take us to Santa Land, can't you? Oh my god, how many times can you get to Santa Land without actually being in Santa Land? Ugh, Dono Robo throws our heroes to Santa Land instead of safely flying them to Santa Land. Then we cut to. Uh... I just. What is this? Uh, it's a couple of neat little houses sitting on cobblestone streets. I think it's a village. My god! My brain doesn't know how to process normal anymore! So, yeah, it turns out that this little village, with its single Christmas tree, a couple of bows, and some strange lights hanging in the air, is Santa Land! Fucking finally! But oh no, Nick starts disappearing, isn't it sad? Who would have guessed I made it all the way here, and yet... It's almost like this was a complete waste of everybody's time! Grandpa said I'd find Santa in Christmas City with this ball! No, actually all he said was that perhaps it'll come in handy. Perhaps it'll come in handy. 
But then again, this movie somehow forgot that Santa Claus uses elves to make his presents, so why the hell should we expect the movie to remember what its own damn characters say? But then the discarded bulb flies onto the Christmas tree, and the tree magically comes to life. Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing my precious back to me. Your precious? Is that ball somehow the Ring of Power? Was this a Lord of the Rings Christmas special this whole time? The tree offers Gobi the chance to have any wish granted that he wants. Of course it does. He wishes that Baby and Nick both get well, but for some stupid unexplained reason, it doesn't work. Hmm, Gobi, you only get one wish. But... But that's one single wish! For both of you to recover! I can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree. It's not like he said, I wish for Baby to be better and that I had a new hoverboard. How does, I wish for Baby and Nick to both get well, not count as a single wish? But yeah, Nick fades away, and I guess we're supposed to feel sad about this. No! But that does solve the problem. Yeah, good point. Now we can wish to save Bebe. Just when it looks like Nick is dead and gone forever, take a look at this. Kobe? Kobe! I'm back! What? You are Santa Claus? Mm hmm Santa Claus! What? You are Santa Claus? Mm hmm Santa Claus! Oh no. No, 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 are you fing kidding me? One no! This Sin Against character design is not Santa Claus! He just isn't! Two, Santa is a reindeer? Of all the animals in the world, why would you make Santa a reindeer? He uses reindeer to make his Christmas Eve flight! It's easy enough to make slavery jokes about Santa's use of elf labor. We don't need him hooking up his own people to pull his sleigh! Three, what the hell is this guy doing in the mushroom forest? Why isn't he at Santa Land or Christmas City or wherever the f he's supposed to be from, preparing for Christmas? Isn't this his busy season? Four, if this asshole was Santa the whole time, why was he completely oblivious to how his own operation was being run? Five, we've seen Santa Claus don a more mundane disguise in order to walk amongst the people of the world for a variety of reasons. That's fine. But he runs into a small child, completely on his own, in the middle of nowhere, looking for Santa to ask for a miracle that his pet dragon be saved, and he doesn't immediately drop the axe and give the kid the miracle that he needs? He had to die first and get the kid to cry for a minute before finally revealing who he really is? What kind of sick mind operates like that? Why didn't you tell me? Why did you just let me go on? I had to be sure if you were serious about saving BB. Fuck you! So hooray, Baby's all better, nobody shoots off a bunch of fireworks, and Gobi and his dragons fly home with some hobo in a crappy Santa Claus costume. Gobi learned his lesson that day, so if you fix your mistakes and care for others the way you would care for yourself, your wishes can come true too. Is that what we're supposed to take away from all this bullshit? What lesson did Gobi learn? What mistakes did he fix? He was already caring for others, i.e. trying to make his pet dragon better, so what was the point of testing him to try to make sure you were cared for? What was the point of any of this? Director, f you. Producers, f you. Writers, f you too. Ian Parkinson. Uh, you have nothing but my respect and my condolences. You were the only one trying in this unforgivable mess. So that was... ATROCIOUS! The animation is terrible. The story reads like it was based on the ramblings of a madman. The voice acting makes you want to stab sharpened candy canes into your ears. The dialogue sounds like it was written by Tommy Wiseau while drunk, high, and hallucinating from lack of oxygen. 
And that twist ending of Old Nick being Santa the whole time and that bullshit attack on Moral was one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in my life! The only redeeming quality that this movie has is the music, which is trying so hard to elevate the movie into something better than it is, but nothing can save it from being anything more than a festering pile of holiday garbage. Seriously, this is Tentacolino levels of WHAT IN GOD'S HOLY NAME WERE YOU THINKING?! Oh, and Donut. You wanna know what I would like to do with Donut? Ah! Oh, that's not good! I'm not happy! Oh, no! <clears throat> So satisfying. As for the rest of this movie, go say hi to the Bear Kingdom for me. Subscribe, like, follow.